basically, I've got some notes with me today because there's so much to think about when I'm trying to remember about these bikes. So what have we got here? Well, we've got a Turbo Levo SL. It's got Fact 11 carbon frame, 160 mils fork on the front, 150 mil travel on the back, a 321 hour battery, a 1.9 kilo weight motor, so about a kilo less than the average motor on the market, but this has only got 240 watts, so it's missing 10 watts. However, Specialized also sell these range extenders, which are uh, 160 watts, so you can get the whole system up to around 480 watts of power, which, and this is the most important point, and I almost want to cut the video at that point there, because Specialized, when they sent me this bike, one of the reasons they wanted to send me to do another test or to do a more detailed test than I did the very first time I rode this was they wanted to try and highlight to people the idea that this bike people should not be afraid of a smaller battery and I think they're right because honestly with this battery combination that I've had here on test I will say that it's got the equivalent range of a 700 watt hour battery it's true that it's only got 35 newton meters of torque but again, let's look at the weight of the bike. It's about five to six kilos, and in some cases even more, seven kilos lighter than the average e-bike. And if you pull around a bike that's seven kilos heavier, you need more power. In my experience, you'll probably find yourself riding closer to the experience of a traditional mountain bike than you will to a traditional e-bike. And that's because of that weight difference, especially when it comes to corners and you brake hard and the bike, the suspension uh, compresses into the corners. When you've got a heavy e-bike, you feel that more with this, you feel it less. It's slightly easier to set up. You feel like you float over things more easily. You're able to respond more instantaneously at different moments during the ride, especially on technical trails, when you ride uphill, you'll find that because the bike is lighter, you've got less of a dead weight to start moving. It's actually become one of my favorite bikes to ride, and that's something, I mean, yes, it's got a fairly reasonable build quality. Uh, we've got SRAM gears, Rover wheels, aluminum. I like the aluminum wheels. I think carbon wheels on a carbon frame are probably a little excessive. The bikes become too stiff. And I prefer the feeling of aluminium wheels. And I've noticed a few other journalists out there, especially somebody from EMBN, he did the same thing. In fact, on a test bike from Specialized, he put, which came with carbon wheels, he put some aluminium wheels. Got code RS brakes on it, pretty good brakes, work really well. Have to say, 200 mil discs on this way to bike, absolutely fine. Setting up the suspension, I found it quite hard to set up when you start going really fast because you want to try and maintain an equilibrium between a very supple soft bike for riding along trails take, absorbing all the little bumps but this thing has the potential to go very fast i found myself really flying along sometimes and having to make some on the fly changes to the suspension especially compression or in fact on the rear shock increasing the uh, pressure so you know we can read off the stats all day the reach on it is certainly long enough for if you want to go aggressive descending it's there but it's also the geometry with a 66 degree head angle and a reasonably uh, vertical seat post angle, you're finding yourself, you can pedal really well with it. It brings to the question, how much power do you actually need to have a good time and to enjoy the trails? It's true, a super powerful bike can be fun, but there's always, in my, in my opinion, I think too much power and you're missing out on something. And that's why I'm here thinking about this going, huh, this bike, is actually become one of my favorite e-bikes to ride. It's got to do with that weight. We need lighter weight e-bikes. Always more autonomy, always more autonomy, always more autonomy. And we end up with batteries like a thousand watts. And I mean, honestly, with this thing, I'm going two, three hours, no problem. The quality of how those watts are used and in which way they're used, they've done pretty much one of the best jobs out there on the market for the lightweight e-bike. I got fitter riding this bike. I enjoyed it more riding than pretty much any other bike I've ridden out there at the moment, including the gravity e-bikes that I've got on test. So lightweight is the future, there's no doubt. With you know, it's got that specialized quality about it. Yes, it's expensive, 9,499. 9, That's quite expensive. 
but you've got something quality here that you can't find easily on other bikes on the market you've got to really hunt and you probably be paying about the same price so what well, i'm looking forward to seeing how this develops over time as we go forward are we going to end up with more and more lightweight electric mountain bikes i think so i don't think they're just going to stop here and then they'll slowly fade away i think this will sort of possibly become or grow to very slowly about half the sort of performance market thanks guys subscribe like and see you soon she was